into the storehouse so that there will be meat in my house. It says, and prove me now, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven, windows with an S. He's saying, I'm going to pour you out blessings that you won't have room enough to receive them. If you need some peace, he's going to blow you out some peace. If you need some joy, he's going to pour you out some joy. If you need a little bit more love, whatever you need, God said, bring you all the tithes. God bless you. And let us repeat after me. We give thee but thine own. Whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. A trust, O oh Lord, from thee. Let us bow our heads. Father, we come now just saying thank you, God. Thank you for the divine plan that you have given us. God, to bless us, dear God. Father, we don't give, dear God, expecting you to bless us, God, because you've already blessed us. Father, we just want to say we thank you for the opportunity, dear God, to participate in giving, God, worshiping you with our tithe and our offering, God. Father, we just want to say we love you, God. We thank you, God. Father, we know all the silver and the gold belong to you, dear God, the cattle upon a thousand hills, dear God. And now, God, we just want to give back a portion of what you've already given us. And we say thank you, God. We love you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we remain standing all over the building, those who that can continue to stand, we're going to follow the directions of our ushers. Everything's gonna be alright. 
Hallelujah. Thank God for his love, for his grace, in saving wretches like ourselves. Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper on that last night that he spent with his disciples. He wanted to be remembered. And he wanted the church to carry out this ordinance until he coming back. Y'all know Jesus coming back, huh? He says, but until I come back, you take this bread. For the bread represents the body of our Lord. That body that was broken. That body that was abused. Likewise, the Bible says he took the cup cup represents his blood. The life is in the blood. When we drink the cup, we're saying, I believe that Jesus gave his life for my salvation. Because be it, be it known that um, without the anointing, none of us could sing. Amen. Glory. It's not about what you bring to God. It's about what he does and what he brings, what you bring to him. Amen. Yes. So they want me to make a plea um, to all the men in the church um, that no matter what you're doing, when you hear the um, announcement from male chorus, if you would come up um, 
Um, it's such a blessing to be with the men of God. It's such a blessing when men come together and worship. Ain't nothing like when women come together, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But if you're not doing anything um, and you want to be a part of this male chorus and we make the plea, because God is doing some wonderful things yes, um, with the entire, every ministry at First Community Annual Baptist Church. Yes. And I just say that if you want to get on board and not miss that train, we ask that you will come out. So fellas, I didn't do it for you. Um, if you would like to be a part of the male chorus, um, see Brother Cooper at the end of the service so that he can get your information. Or Brother Cooper, raise your hand for those that don't know. Him. And yes. also Brother Peasy, raise your hand. These are our leaders in the, in the um, men's ministry. If you want to be a part so that we can get some things kicked off for 2008, 2017. I'm a whole year behind. Um, please see Brother Cooper or Brother Peasy so that we can get your name down. And we know that Jesus is love, amen. Yeah. I don't want to hear T.I. can't sing, and I can't either, but I thank God for the anointing that makes the difference. Amen. Amen. Uh, God yes. bless you. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
God for our male chorus. Thank God for all of them. Amen. Did y'all notice these two here? <laughs> Amen. Guess what my message is today? You can make it if you trust. <laughs> One accord. I want us to stand for the reading of the word, uh, Psalm 73, verse number 28. Psalm 73, verse number 28. Let us read together. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. Thank you for your obedience. You can make it if you trust. The instability of life have many on age. Can't say it enough. The election of Donald Trump has caused many to despair and to question what does the future hold? What does the future hold for our, the economy? What does the future hold for our national and international affairs? What does the future hold? Will we be ex included or excluded from this administration agenda? Will we be deported or relegated to position of insignificance? TOPS, Taylor Opportunity Program for Students, has been cut. It's a program of state scholarship for Louisiana residents who attend either one of the Louisiana public colleges and a university or an institution that are part of the Louisiana Association has been cut, leaving many students unable to further their education. Many are in question. What does the future hold? There is much concern today to, uh, in regards to our future. The question specifically is, can I make it in these perplexing, troublesome times? That's the question we ask. Will I make it? Can I make it? Uh, will, will my children make it? Will there be jobs for them? Well, the, the education that they are pursuing now, will it become in the next few years obsolete? There are concerns today. 
Without holding you too long this morning, I come to tell you that we need to slightly change our common or colloquial expression. You have heard the expression, you can make it if you try. Well, many have tried and didn't make it. Many are trying today and not making it. And many will try and will not make it. Since these are undeniable facts, I propose to you a slightly different way. You can make it if you trust. I thought I'd get an amen. Yeah. Let, let's look, you can make it if you try. I, I tried, but I didn't make it. But you can make it if you trust. Maybe I have to stop trying or, or, or cease somewhat of trying and start trusting more. Trying less and trusting more. Yes, yes. Our scripture this, for this message is Psalm 73, 28. The psalmist here, who is Asaph, began this psalm by affirming that God is good to his people. But yet, in spite of knowing the goodness of the Lord, he was envious. Because of the prosperity of the wicked. He was having problems. Asaph was having problems. He said, I know God is good to his, his children, his people, and I know what God has promised. But when I look out over life, I don't, I don't see the connection between the goodness of God and the prosperity of his people. Matter of fact, I see just the opposite. I see the wicked prospering. And those who are trying to live for God, those who are making sacrifices, those who have embraced the creed of God and the principles of God, they are the ones suffering. I see folks outside of the church doing good, people inside of the church doing bad. I got problems here. So Isaac was honest to say, I've got problems. He, he, saw, he, he saw those who oppose God, faring or better, than those who acknowledge God. That's what this psalm is all about. This observation and seemingly fact threw a sap for a loop. He almost lost his faith in God's goodness. He observed that the wicked do not seem to suffer trouble as other people, verses 4 and 5. He goes on to say that the wicked, they cover themselves with pride, and violence, pride is what we talk about in leadership. Verses, verse 6. That evil devices are unbounded, verse 7. That speech is scornful, malicious, and arrogant. As if, he says in verses 8 and 9, they own the earth. They respect not God, they respect not man. And they live as if. They control their own destiny. They seem to believe that uh, the world will stop if they cease making their contribution to the perpetuity of society. Many people like Asap are carried away by the evil that they see in the world. Why would God allow this to happen? Why am I having such a hard time? Aside from p feeling pity for themselves. It's the fact that the prosperity of the wicked and the changing of our time and the seemingly happiness of those who are outside of Christ is greater than those who are in Christ. Many people are carried away by their evil and their self-confidence. They seem to have no care in this world. Asaph said that he was confused over uh, the value of his own salvation. If, if this paying off for me, all the church service that I make, all the worship that I, I do, the praise that I give, is it really paying off? I'm laughing and telling my friend that everything is all right. But yet I got problems in my home. I got problems on my job. Seems like everybody and everything is wearing me down. Everybody is pulling at my coattail. Some of you feel that way perhaps. 
We smile on the outside. And sometimes we cry on the inside. And sometimes we wonder if this thing is really paying off. You don't think that's the case? Why do you think there's so many half-hearted believers? Why are there so many believers who have not really totally surrendered to God? It's because of the fact that they just don't believe that total surrender, uh, uh, isolating myself from the affairs of this life and, 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 and refraining from fleshly indulgence, I'm going to miss something in life. So I better let it all hang out. I better really go for the gusto. Because if not, I'm going to miss out on something enjoyable in life. That's why folk put more time in their own agenda than they put in God's agenda. That's why folks read more of the newspaper and the internet than they read God's word. Because this is important. The internet, all of these things are important. I got to get on Facebook because I got to know what everybody doing, everybody's business. And put a little time in learning about God's business. That's what we really believe. If, see, if you believe something, you give yourself to it. You bank on it. You cast all of your lot upon it. And, and so then that's, that's the way Asaph felt. And listen, listen. He felt that he had cleansed himself in vain. Did I give you the scripture, 13 and 14? Asaph felt that he had given himself in vain. Listen, verily I have cleansed my heart in vain. I have worshipped in vain. I have prayed in vain. I have washed my hands in innocence. My heart as my life relates to God. My hands as it is seen by man. For all the day long have I been plagued and chased on every morning. I'm the one being chased on. And the evil man seems to be getting by. Asaph was having problems here. Trying to, 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 to correlate what he had been taught with what he actually saw. Listen, listen, listen. But you read verse 28, you see a man who had recovered himself, a man who overcame his doubt and uncertainties. Yes, yes. That's why he said in verse number 28, uh, I will trust the Lord. Now, here it is, that is, that is, but it is good for me. Now, he's been, he been complaining all the while. He's been talking. Uh, but then he comes to this conclusion. It is good for me to draw near to God. In spite of how it look, in spite of how it seem, in spite of what they are saying, and in spite of my own suffering, my own, my own uh, conflict, he said, it's still good for me to draw near to God. Or oh, it will do you good, my sisters and brothers, to draw near to God. God did not... Promise us that we wouldn't have doubts, that we won't be ambivalent, that we won't be sure we wouldn't be sure about certain things. God has not promised us that we won't have uh, problems in the area of trying to reconcile His goodness with the suffering of the good, and His goodness, His punishment with the prosperity of the wicked. He didn't promise us that. So it's good to draw nigh to Him. He may not explain to you everything, and he will not explain to you everything about himself, but he will give you comfort in the midst of whatever you're going through. And in whatever you face, and he will give you a measure of peace. To know that no matter how it look, it's just how it look, it's just how it look. But behind, as the writer says, behind, behind a frowning face is a smiling God. In spite of my doubt, he is still God. In spite of my doubt, he is still God. Watching, watching the post-football uh, uh, game, uh, uh, the post-experience uh, uh, of some of the players who had lost the game to Florida, one of the players said in, being in the interview, he said, we just don't understand from LSU. I don't know why. I don't understand. He said, but one thing I know, God is sovereign. 
And it's good to hear an athlete, and it's good to hear anybody talk about the sovereignty of the goodness of God, which means that God rules. It's good to hear, but especially coming from a young man who is on the football field, when there are so many other young men looking at him and listening to him and thinking only of performance, this young man said, no matter what, he said, God is sovereign. And he said, God has purpose and God has will. We don't understand, but God is working out his purpose in the world today. And he allows certain things to happen, even though to us it seems like it's unfair, but God is able to take the negative and make the positive. God is able to take the bad and make the good. God is able to take that which is obscured and make it clear. God is working on his purpose. Our challenge is to wait. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Trust God. Hang in there. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And when he comes, he may not bring you what you think you ought to have. Instead of bringing sugar, he might bring lemon. But, but you got to just trust that God knows what he is doing. He knows what he's doing. And sometimes, in order for us to come to a place where we can appreciate what we have, he has to bring us to a place where we don't have much. It was a blessing to go to bed last night. It was a blessing to be washed over all night last night. It's a blessing to get up this morning. It's a blessing to get in your car, whatever, catch a ride and come to the house of God. It's a blessing somebody got in an accident. It's a blessing somebody didn't wake up this morning. It's a blessing I tell you somebody woke up and didn't have food to eat. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. God is good and his mercy endures forever. It's a Recovered himself. He was a man who overcame his doubts and his uncertainties. But the question is, how did Asaph overcome and recover himself from the pains of his injection, dejection? Look at verse number 17, if you will. He said, in the second verse, he said, my foot almost slipped. I almost slipped. I almost fell. I almost I almost walked away from this. I almost give up. He said, but, 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 I went into the, I went to church. He <laughs> said, I was, I was almost ready to give up, but when I went to church, it's a good thing to come to the house of the Lord. I heard stuff in the church that I couldn't hear nowhere else. Yeah. I've been to a whole lot of places, but I heard something in the church. Yeah. I heard somebody talking about the goodness of the Lord. I heard somebody say that God is working all things out for the good of his people. I heard somebody say that his mercy endures forever. I heard somebody say that God's grace was sufficient. I heard somebody say God's ways are not like man's ways. I heard God say, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways above my ways. I walk on the water. You, you, you can't track me down. I walk on the water and leave no track for nobody to follow. I take two fishes and five loaves of bread and I feed 5,000 folk. I put my hand on the sick and they get up. I put my hand on the dead and they rise up and live again. I heard something in the church that I couldn't hear nowhere else. Somebody said, God said, come unto me, all ye that weary, labored and heavy laden. I will give you rest. God said, I will not give you all the answers that you desire, but I will give you a peace that passes all understanding, a joy that the world can't take away. I went to church. I'm glad I went to church. I went to church and I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lie down, I weary one, lie down, your head upon my breast. I got in a hurry, and I came to Jesus just as I was, weary, wounded, and sad, and I found in him a resting. He recovered, but how did he recover? 
Not by talking to other pessimistic folks. Not talk by talking to folks who whine and complain all the time. He, he talked with folks who had been through some stuff. He talked to an old lady who said, look, boy, I raised five children on a measly income. He talked to an old man who said that I was on the job and they mistreated me and everything on the job, but I trust God and he kept me. They tried to get rid of me, but God was with me and he, he, he sustained me and he would not let the powers that be here. I'm glad he said, until I went into the sanctuary. Then I understand. I understood. You can get understanding from coming to church. Things that you cannot understand outside of the fellowship, you can get understanding because God has promised wherever two or three are gathered, two or three are gathered in his name, he'll be in the midst. In the midst doing what? Giving understanding. Giving comfort. Giving strength. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Am I helping somebody? It's all right to go other places when you leave here, but you ought to get up with your minds on Jesus, and you ought to make it to the house of the Lord, where he promised to meet his people. He went to church, and in church he learned the truth about those who put their trust in something or someone other than God. He said, Satan had me fooled. I thought those folks outside the church had it going on. He said, but I went to church. Those who do not trust in God will suffer. Well, let allow Asaph to tell us about the plight of those who trust in themselves, others, or in something else. I told you what, but, but let, let's Asaph tell us. Let's look at verses. 21 through, well, let's look at verse 20, and then 21 through 26. Verse 20, as a dream. He said, in other words, those who live without God and put their trust in something else, it's like a fantasy. When one wake up, they find that when they really wake up, not just physically but spiritually, they find that they have given themselves to an inferior cause. They find that all that they had given themselves to came short of bringing the utopia and the satisfaction that they really wanted. I keep telling y'all that, and I think you got it by now. The party going to be over after a while. The psychedelic light going to stop flashing. And the folks who was calling you Mr. Big Stuff and Mr. Big Shot, they're going to walk away when you run out of your money. He said, it's just a fantasy, it's a dream. That's why I got to keep going back to the same places, doing the same thing, leaving away, hurting their bodies, and on and on and on. And so then, the 21, look at he said, thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I to think that they had it going on. So foolish was I to think that they were better off than me. So foolish was I to believe that because they had houses and land and cars and money that they had it going on and everything was all right with them. He said, so foolish was I. He had to, he had to call, call, go to church to find out he was a fool. <laughs> Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Oh, Lord, now he's saying that. Lord, I, he, he confessed. You follow he came clean with God. He was honest with God and he was honest with himself. He said, so, nevertheless, I am continually with thee, O Lord. In spite of my foolishness, in spite of my stupidity, in spite of my ignorance, thou hast held me by my right hand. You allow me to stray. You allow me to get out of the path. You allow me to play the role of a fool. But you kept my hand in your hand. So I could go so far this way and so far that way. But you kept your hands on me. And you kept 
my hand in your hand. Then he said, right hand signifying the power of God. Oh, you and I would have strayed if it had not been for the power of God. You and I would be in the same condition that many others are in had it not been for the power of God. You ought to be glad today that God did not let you experience the full consequences of some of the choices you made. Isn't it wonderful that God practiced damage control? You and I were on our way to hell. You and I were on our way to destruction. But God kept his hands upon us. Some of us, he had to put down on our sick bed. Some of us, he had to allow trouble to come. Some of us, he had to allow our children to bring burdens to our heart. But he had to do what he had to do in order to slow us down. And we were wide open going down a road of destruction. Am I talking to anybody in this place? Huh? Talking brag about how much liquor we can drink. Not realizing that God put a limit to how much you can drink to cause you to pass out. Because if you can drink so much, you'll poison your system. And you'll die right there. Am I helping somebody? He allow us, he allow us to have limitations on our fleshly indulgence. If he didn't, we'd be from one woman to another, one man to another. Kept his hand on us. Am I helping somebody? Speeding down the highway and all of a sudden he let a state trooper come out of the bushes to slow us down because we were headed to wreck somebody as well as ourselves. He gave me a ticket. He had and God said, if you only knew had he not been there, the 18 wheeler was about to run the stop sign. Thou shalt guide me in spite of what I'm going through, in spite of what I see, in spite of uh, uh, the mistake I've made. You will guide me with that counsel. And then when it's all over with, you will receive me into glory. Don't be fooled by all the glitter. Might not be gold, it just might be shattered glass. Everything shines, not gold. Everybody who say good night is not going home. And everybody with their eyes closed, not sleeping. God, you can count on him. 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 Those who are near God and trust in God will find joy and safety. God will be a refuge for all who come to him. Yes, yes, and emphatically yes. You can make it if you trust in God. Shall we stand all over this place? You've heard the message, you might. You've heard the message. You might want to act upon that message. The only appropriate response to the truth of God is faith, trust in Him. If you're present and God has spoken to your heart, you can come by letter, by Christian experience, as a candidate for baptism, you can come and say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can come and allow him to have his rightful place in your life. By letter, by Christian experience, as a candidate for baptism, you may come and say yes to the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated.
God bless you today and the Lord keep you. I trust that the message has blessed your heart today. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very kindly. There are still um, ornaments on the uh, Christmas tree. I think at this point we have uh, taken off about two, uh, over 250. That's wonderful on your part. Over 250 uh, families represented by uh, your gift, your intended gift. Uh, but there's still some left. And uh, if you haven't gotten yours, are you, you God that puts you in a unique position where you say, whoa, boy, I had some stuff come in that I didn't expect this check. And you want to share that with others? There's still ornaments left on the tree. Amen. I can't tell you enough how much I love you and appreciate you, and I thank the Lord for you. And God is pleased with at least us trying. And I just want to encourage your heart. Read your Bible every day. Pray. I'm not say, saying your prayer, but pray. Ask God to draw you nearer to him so that you can see more clearly. Love him more dearly and walk with him more nearly. Come and get involved with one of the ministries of the church so we can work together. Form friendship and partnership with each other so that you can discuss the word of God over the telephone. Maybe visit each other Pray together. All of these uh, behaviors will help you to draw, draw nearer to God and become stronger. You do want to become stronger, right? Yes. And that's how you become stronger. Amen? Amen? God bless you. And God keep you. Thank God for the candidate and his family. Thank you. So grateful for you all. Thank the Lord for you all. Amen? Glory, glory, glory. Again, don't forget about the key situation. And also, I think we're asking to go to our uh, sister to you. You were asking and if anybody wanted to sign up, and be, yeah, be a part of the uh, mail course. So you can come and uh, see Brother Adam or Brother uh, 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 Washington and uh, do that. But get involved, please. Get in. Ah, get involved. Amen? Amen? Shall we stand, please? Join our hands together. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. And help us, help us, help us. Amen.